Welcome back to Gift to Guitars. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Typically on this channel, I build guitars for people, but today I'm going to take a guitar that's old and pretty broken and try and make it into something really cool. This is the guitar I'll be messing with today, and this guitar actually has a pretty cool little story behind it. A year ago, before I was doing Gift to Guitars, my sister in law, Sarah, came up to me and said, Hey, you play guitar, you know things about guitars. I just got a guitar at a garage sale for like 10 bucks. Could you take a look at it and see if you could figure out how to make it work again? And I was like, I don't know if I can fix it, but I'm willing to learn. I couldn't get the electronics to work because I didn't have soldering equipment yet, which I have now, so I'm excited to pull this apart and try and fix it so that it plays correctly. But I did put new strings on it, polished it up a little bit, and gave it to them. And the whole point of this guitar was for my nieces to kind of play around with it, mess around, uh, strum it a little bit, see if they have any interest in guitar. And it got knocked around quite a bit. You can see three of the strings are currently missing, so now it's a three-string guitar. I'll put some new strings on here. And it looks like it fell over a couple times and got kind of scratched up. There's a pretty big chip here and here in the guitar. And there's a chip right here in the guitar. And the neck right here has a really nasty hit to it. So I saw them the other day and I was like, how's that guitar that you guys have? And they're like, oh, I kind of got beat up a little bit, but if you want to take a look at it, maybe you could fix it again, which I'm very happy to do. But I also asked if I could do something a little extra. And uh, both of my nieces love the show Stranger Things. So I want to take this guitar and do a Stranger Things theme to it. Not Nothing too too over the top, but um, I do want to kind of play around with it and see if I can, if I can make it look kind of cool and customized. The brand of guitar that this is is a first act guitar. First act, I think means like your first guitar, like this is the guitar you learn on. And when I set it up last time, I played it a little bit and it played just great. Aside from the fact that you couldn't plug it in, but it held tune, it could play a song, and uh, I'm excited to, to have it back and, and get to work on it again and give it back to them in working condition and make it so they can plug it into an amp and actually like rock out. When Sarah brought me this guitar a year ago, all the screws were all rusty. Every, it looked like it had like sat outside for a long time. And so I stripped it all down. I put all of the metal parts in soda, pop, Coke, people call it different things, a bubbly, drink that's super sugary and it actually uh, deoxified I'm not sure if that's the right term. I'm just making things up at this point. It took a lot of the rust off. Let's just say that. And then uh, it got played with. And I'm really happy that it got played with. Even the fact that it's got like dings on it and it doesn't have all of its strings, it served its purpose, which is really to inspire. And I hope that it does inspire my nieces to learn guitar. That's the whole point of this channel even, is to have people inspired to go out and do something cool and do something cool for someone else. I hope that by fixing up this guitar, customizing it a little bit, making it more fun to play, it will inspire them. Just just feel like a rock star for a minute. That's what I want them to do. But the first step for a project like this is to get a piece of trash. This will work. Uh, this is just a piece of scrap cardboard from something that got shipped to me and now I'm gonna take it and make it into a guide Basically what I do is I take a piece of cardboard and I draw a horrible picture of the guitar. Then I punch little holes anywhere that a screw is gonna come out of the guitar. And I'm gonna put it onto this so that I can reference it when I put the guitar back together. Now that I've got my guide, I can start to take the guitar apart. So this is pretty typical back cover for this type of guitar with the three single coil pickups. We've got everything going to the switch, which is right here, and then it goes to the two volumes, and this is a tone knob, and then this wire goes here, and it's probably connected underneath this part, which is called the bridge, and that is grounding the whole guitar, and then this wire goes down here and connects into the jack. I'm not gonna get too deep into electronics, but already I see something that is wrong right here. This should be soldered 
I think right here, but I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit before I put the guitar back together. But right now I'm just taking everything off so that I can get to polishing and painting this guitar. Then I'll come back to the electronics, but I already see something right there that is pretty interesting. And before I go any further, I'm gonna take a couple pictures of the electronics because that will help me put the guitar back together later if I have pictures to reference. I can't actually take this off of the guitar until I unsolder these two wires here. So I'm gonna open these up and then take out my soldering iron and see what is going to be the best way to make this loose so I can get this off of here and start working on the paint job. Here's my plan with this guitar. I would like to write Stranger Things in the font of Stranger Things right here at the base of the guitar. So when you look at the guitar, if it's in a stand or whatever, you see it and you go, that's a Stranger Things guitar. And then on the back side of the guitar, or as I like to call it, the upside down, I'm gonna do kind of a little mural thing. So I'm gonna start with the front, see what I can get get to make look good on here and then uh, and then take it from there. Typically with a guitar, I will do the design work on it and then lacquer the guitar afterward. This guitar has already been lacquered and so my plan is to use enamel paint. This is the kind of paint you use on like little toy model cars and airplanes and it really sticks to pretty much anything, I'm hoping. If I'm right, it'll stick to the guitar and it'll stay on it and be awesome. If I'm wrong, um, I have to figure something else out. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. First thing is I need to transfer this image onto the guitar and I'm gonna use transfer paper to do that. Let's get started. So if you're not familiar with transfer paper, basically how it works is you put it between the thing you're transferring onto and the piece of paper that has your design on it. And then I'm taking an embossing tool, but you could take like a ballpoint pen or a pencil. And you basically just trace the thing that you want to transfer over. And then when you lift it all up, the thing that you've transferred is now on the object you want to transfer it onto. All right. I'm a little nervous about this next part. I've done a little bit of testing on the inside of the guitar. Like this, this is gonna get covered up by the actual like components of the guitar. So I tested out some white thinking that maybe I'd do white with a little bit of red on top. Uh, but then I checked out the red and the red just goes on so easily. I don't think I need the white undercoat. I've never actually used one of these line painting brushes before. All I really know about them is that watching people that are really good with them is very soothing. And I've seen quite a few videos of people just painting delicate lines.
that looks pretty good. Nice little hand-painted Stranger Things. It took a little getting used to doing the line brush. You kind of have to like move your body around and kind of like paint with your whole body in order to get it to make nice smooth strokes, but it does a pretty good job. And I think with some practice, I could actually do it really well. Luckily, the Stranger Things logo is usually like pulsing and like kind of looks a little imperfect on purpose. So I don't mind how it kind of has that homemade hand-drawn look to it. I think it's actually kind of cool. That was a little easier than I anticipated. It's one of those things that isn't that hard to do unless you rush it. So it took me a really long time to do it. <laughs> it took a lot of patience, but with a lot of things, if you take the time, if you are patient, you don't mind messing up a little bit in the beginning, there's a lot of stuff that you can do in life that, that might intimidate you at first, but just go for it, just do it, have fun with it. This was fun. I like it. It is the next day and this is fully dry. So it's a little more raised than I thought it was gonna be, but I, I, I like it, I think it looks good. And now it's time to start working on the back of the guitar. So when you turn the guitar upside down, you see the creature. I think this is called the shadow monster or the, the brain flare, mind flare, some, some real creepy looking thing. I think it'll make a really cool back for the guitar. It'll allow me to use my airbrush. I've never used an enamel with an airbrush before, so I'm excited to try that out and do some cool new stencil techniques. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I sort of mapped this out in my head and masked it off in layers. So hopefully I can take the layers off and as I take the layers off, add more paint and make certain elements of it look further away. Hopefully that'll make sense as I go here. Uh, the next step is to mix paint so that it's the right color and also the right consistency to go through the airbrush because right now it's too thick. Different paints have different mediums, so a lot of the paint that I've used in the past has been a water-based paint. This particular paint is an enamel, which means I can't just add water to it. Water won't mix with it, it won't work. So for this, I'm gonna use a thinner and try and thin down the paint to about the consistency of whole milk so that it can go through the airbrush. Okay, so a couple things. Hopefully you can hear me through this. First off, I'm very glad that I wore a respirator. I've used this type of paint before on models, like when I was building little toy cars and stuff, but doing it with an airbrush, it's like it gets everywhere and I'm so glad that I have this and I'm protecting my lungs. Yeah. Secondly, I had a moment there where I thought I had messed up the whole thing. Some of the paint had dripped out of the little bowl that's on the airbrush over the top of the airbrush and dripped into the spray and splattered everywhere. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, it's this moment here. I thought I had ruined the whole thing, but 
I kept going with it and now I think it actually looks kind of cool with that splatter. It, it gives it more dimension and I kind of worked with it. And that is something that I have done with all of the guitars at some point or another on this channel is something happens that's unexpected and as long as you roll with it and don't get too frustrated you can end up with something maybe even cooler than what you had originally thought you were going to do. So now we have this guy on here and you can see the splatter it just kind of looks like stars or like the floaty around dust bits from the show. When they go into the upside down there's like all this like floating debris it's like really weird cool atmosphere and I think that's that's that on the guitar I wouldn't have put it on there so I'm kind of glad that the airbrush messed up <laughs> and that I, I got that splatter because that actually I don't know I think it kind of adds to the guitar and I think it, it turned out pretty cool but I did have a moment I have to admit where I thought oh that's that is I messed it up now what I'm I'm gonna have to say sorry to my nieces <laughs> but now I can say I did it on purpose unless they watch this and then I fixed it. Aren't you proud of me? One thing that I want to point out about this is this paint wasn't that expensive and this guitar was practically free. So if you are interested in, in what I'm doing and you're like, man, I wish I could do that but I don't have the money, this w I mean, I'm modifying this guitar and customizing this guitar and it's costing basically nothing. The airbrush was a little expensive, but you can get cheap airbrushes as well. And I didn't even use the airbrush on the front here, I used a $3 paintbrush. Anybody can do this. Anybody can go out and get an old guitar and modify it and make it their own. And I think that that's super cool. It's, like, it's a cool thing to think about. On the next episode of Gifted Guitars, I am going to be giving this guitar to them. But first, I'm going to have to go through and try and figure out why it wasn't working. I want this guitar to play nicely. I want anyone to be able to pick up this guitar and if they know how to play guitar to go like, yeah, I can play this. Mainly me when I go visit. But the last time I worked on this guitar, I couldn't get it to plug in and actually work. So I'm going to be really diving deep into the electronics on this, trying to figure out how to make the guitar actually make the proper sound that it's supposed to make and then give it back to them and see their reaction. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, write something nice in the comment section. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to turn on the notifications so you get notified when I post new videos. I post new videos like this every Friday. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.